We begin today by acknowledging the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, the traditional owners of the land on which I gather and we gather, and we pay our respect to their elders, um, past, present and emerging. Well, welcome to this second Sunday of the Easter season for 2020. And the sentence today comes from the first letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter, verse, chapter 2, beginning at 14a and then 22 to 32. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all those who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed o over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Psalm 16, and again a responsorial psalm, and the response is, O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. Together, O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. Protect me, O God, or I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a God goodly heritage. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. The second reading is 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 1 to 12. I, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia, who have been chosen and destined by God the Father and sanctified by the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and to be sprinkled with his blood. May grace and peace be yours in abundance. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, eerie for now for a little while, while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of, of the grace that was yours to be yours made careful search and inquiry, inquiring about the person or time that the spirit of Christ within them indicated when it testified in advance to the sufferings destined for Christ and the subsequent glory. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves but you. In regard to the things that have now been announced to you through those who brought you good news by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Hear the word of the Lord. Gathered, Jesus is here, one with each other. Jesus is here, joined by the Spirit, washed in the blood, part of the body, the church of God. Jesus is here, one with each other, Jesus is here. As we are gathered, 
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John in the 20th chapter commencing at verse 19. Glory to you Lord Jesus Christ. When it was the evening on that day the first day of the week and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews Jesus came and stood among them and said peace be with you. After he had said this he showed them his hands and his side Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. When I was preparing this sermon, uh, many things were actually uh, spinning around in my mind. I'm not usually this personal, so I'm a little nervous of actually um, beginning this way. Um, When I recall my childhood, my most endearing memory are all the times I spent with my father. My parents separated when I was a baby, so my dad was like a Santa Claus to me, a man I only saw occasionally, and usually bearing gifts and spoiling me rotten. He lived in a different city from my home in Sydney, so from about the age of seven, I was put on a plane and sent to him for one school holiday each year. In my teen years, I became much more observant of the contents of his home, old, and wondered why he didn't get new furniture. Most of it belonged to my grandparents. I also remember how he started every day listening to the ABC News on his very old transistor radio, and came to know the jingle that introduced the news very well. Every time I hear it, I think of him. But perhaps the most important, uh, not important, but one of the biggest memories is him enjoying his pipe 
Um, as to a child, it looked very grown up and dashing. My dad was, actually. He used Erin Moore tobacco, and after his death, I discovered many empty tins in his garage containing screws and nuts and bolts, which I still have today. And each time I open them, the smell of the tobacco remains, and my father is with me once again. When he suffered a terrible accident late one midwinter Canberra night, he remained in a coma for two weeks. The time I spent by his, that, for that whole two weeks I spent by his side with my four, five month old son, who um, during the course of that two weeks developed um, chicken pox. <laughs> so he had to stay at home with his dad. I knew my dad couldn't acknowledge my presence, but I also knew that he knew that this was my way of telling him how much I treasured my time with him from my birth to his death. And at the moment of his death, intense grief began. In the Christian literature that considers the gospel that we just heard read, there are numerous accounts of why Thomas doubts. We tend to focus on that disciple and his doubt and our doubt and the impact of doubt on faith. But I want to look at the story from a slightly different point of view. Instead of being concerned with Thomas, let's look at what might be the point of the entire story, which is God is continually coming to us, wherever we may be, and in whatever difficult and heartbreaking situation we find ourselves. God is always seeking us. So it can be helpful to look at this story, keeping in the forefront of our mind that God is seeking us. So it's the evening of the first day of the week. Jesus had been crucified only days before. The disciples were in a house behind locked doors and living in a state of panic and fear, as well as with their intense grief. But Thomas wasn't with them, so isn't at all convinced when the disciples tell him of Jesus' resurrection and appearance to them. We can identify with Thomas here. So Jesus comes to Thomas, determined to be with him. Nothing will stop him, not locked doors or any fear of what is outside. Notice that Jesus doesn't confront Thomas or argue with him or even scold him, but greets him with a customary, peace be with you, and then shows Thomas his hands and his side and invites him to touch. Jesus is therefore determined to reach this one who needs more than the words of his friends. Jesus doesn't want to let anything or anyone come between him and those he loves. Which is, I think, very good news for us. Because there are times throughout our lives when we are cut off from both society and God. Right now you are all watching this in your homes, behind a locked door, probably. And there is a sense of fear about the world around us right now. But even without the current situation, there will be many who constantly feel cut off from friends, family, or communities. We, as the disciples did, can metaphorically also lock the doors of our hearts for fear of ourselves, for fear of others, for fear of death, for fear of not being understood, or maybe even loved. Somehow in those times, God does come to us in the strangest of ways and in the strangest of places. And in lowering our defences just the slightest bit, we find that we can just begin to see God. It may be that we just see the very outline of hope without the colour applied to it. But that very small glimmer is enough. Well, for me, it was a stranger when my father was dying. 
It can be a child that asks you for a hug. And in the touch, you realise you're longing for healing. Or looking at the other side, you may be the one that allows another to see the face of God. You may be the one that offers a word or a gesture that opens the door so that another can see or hear or even desire to be in the presence of God. But it could be your vulnerability or your warm greeting that will be the very gift that says to another, God is present in this place or in this conversation or even in this moment. I do hope each of you are being cared for in some way during this time within our parish family. That someone may come to mind so you find yourself reaching out to pick up the telephone. I will say at this point I haven't been very good at keeping up what I hope to do in the first week of the church closure, so I do ask for your forgiveness. Our response in coming out of hiding, out of fear, out of times of profound grief, maybe not as Thomas's was. It may be the instant revelation that results in exclaiming, my Lord and my God. It may be just a sliver of light, a tiny breaking of the shell that we have so carefully constructed in order to shut out the light. But it is a beginning. It's a promise. It's the blessed relief of knowing that hope and joy are a reality. Have you seen God lately? In a child, in the words of a song, in the face of a stranger, in the voice of a friend or a loved one? May you also be that gift to another. The Lord be with you. Well, let us now stand and together affirm the faith of the church. And it's in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, and the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now pray for all people and the church throughout the world. God of Easter glory, come enter into the darkness of people who doubt or are in despair. Enfold them into the presence of your light, love and peace, awakening people to trust in you and in the power of the resurrection. We give thanks for the work and awareness of the World Health Organization and pray for leaders of nations and governments, especially in our nation, as each seeks ways to manage the coronavirus outbreak. May people be respectful of all the restrictions imposed, so helping curb the spread throughout the society. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we give thanks for all your faithful people, who, though they have not seen you, do believe. We pray for all bishops, clergy, and all who offer ministry in the present changed circumstances, striving to keep congregations connected to each other. We give thanks for the services which Joanne, with the assistance of others, is, via video, providing for our spiritual sustenance. Within the Anglican Communion, we pray for the Church of Ireland, Ministry to the Defence Force, Hospital Chaplaincy, and the Parish of Oakley. Lord, be with this and all parishes that are seeking to meet their financial obligations to the diocese and the usual regular payments of utilities or loans. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Gracious God, we thank for our homes, uh, for our families, for the family of this parish. Pray for families in crisis, those who are estranged from loved ones, 
or separated by social distancing regulations, in particular residents in aged care or people in hospital. Comfort and encourage people who are unwell or recovering from illness, those unable to care for themselves, those grieving, and each and every person in their own special need, especially praying for Lois, Beryl, Isabel, Jess and her family, Eileen, Mari, Ainsley, Jeff, Talia and Brody, and all others known to you. Strengthen those whom you have called into healing and caring roles, especially the pastoral care leaders at St Matthew's and each person here at St Linus. Risen Lord, in your mercy, Hear prayer. Crucified and risen Christ, we give thanks for all who share with others their faith and belief in you and now rest with you in God's glory and pray that we may recognise you in our midst and at last come to be with all your saints in the fullness of joy in your presence. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us, Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been offered for us. Therefore, we come to celebrate the festival. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offering for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. And now we give you thanks that you raised him to life triumphant and exalted him in glory. By his victory over death, the reign of sin is ended. A new day has dawned, a broken world is restored, and we are made whole once more. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. And together, renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. Come, eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
Those are the eyes with which he sees Yours are the feet with which he walks Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world Yours are the Lord of life. We thank you that you nourish us in these Easter mysteries. Fill us with the spirit of love and unite us in faith that we may witness to the resurrection and show your glory to all the world. Most loving God, will you send us into the world you love? Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. You could have actually joined me there. <laughs> Before I give the blessing and dismissal, I would like to um, just say thank you to a few people in the parish that are helping with these services as we uh, gave thanks today in our prayers. Um, I couldn't do this without the help of um, several people, uh, some here today. Um, but also uh, to others who are working behind the scenes. The pew sheet is available on the website each week. That hasn't changed. Uh, so please access the pew sheet there. Whatever, you can actually get your Bible and pause the video when the... <coughs> pardon me. Pause the video when the Bible readings are announced so that you can follow along in your own Bible at home. Uh, for those on... Uh, who are watching this, you can like the video each week or make a comment and that helps me to understand um, you know, how this is being received. I have had a few responses from some people that have been very kind and um, supportive. Um, so please feel free to do that because this is a, a difficult situation doing this so solitary. Please tell your friends or your neighbours or anyone on the telephone, your, your family even, um, and this could be a way of you sharing this with them. So now, let me give the Easter blessing. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.